welcome. Today we will be discussing one of the case studies which will help us to understand the application of the different theories of ethical decision making to that particular situation. As we understand the subject matter of business ethics is to deal with the dilemmas that we find while making business decisions with respect to certain issues at hand. The ethical decision making comes when first we recognize that there are certain issues and then based on the principles that we follow, the guidelines that we follow, whether we follow a absolute principle relativism principle or we take a pluralistic lens, we try to arrive at a solution which we think like it is right to do, right to decide in this way and maybe it is not right to do the other way. So, now we are going to discuss about a particular case and then we will try to solve the dilemma in this case through different lenses of apply different ethical theories that we have discussed in our previous discussions. The case goes as such, it is producing toys child's play. While discussing the case, I will highlight some of the key pointers of the case. So, that while you are discussing ethical issues with relevance to a particular case, you have to understand the key pointers and then why, what are the ethical dilemmas in that area and then move forward towards the decision making. So, the case goes as like you means that you are playing the role of the decision maker are the product manager of a confectionery company that includes small plastic toys with its chocolate sweets. So, you can understand like it is the it is the inclusion of like they include small plastic toys with its chocolate sweets. Then what you have made? You have made a potential Thai manufacturer of these toys at a trade fair in Europe. So, you have made the potential, you have to be aware like you have made the uh, potential Thai manufacturer of these toys at a trade fair in Europe. And now you visit the company in northeastern part of the Thailand to finalize a two year supply contract. So, here we are dealing, we will be highlighting you with the main points as we move forward with the case, because it is very important that we know the key points while we are dealing with the case and the ethical dilemmas with respect to that. So, we find like you are playing the role of the product manager of a confectionery company that includes small plastic toys with its chocolate sweets. So, we can understand like the intended targeted people who will be taking the of your products are of course, the children. Having met a potential Thai manufacturer of these toys in a trade fair in Europe, you now visit the company in northeastern part of um, Thailand to finalize a two year supply contract. Arriving over there and talking to the sales manager you are able to arrange a deal 
which supplies you with the toys at a third of the cost currently charged by your Portuguese uh, supplier, but with equivalent quality and supply arrangements. So, the <coughs> ethical points may be which should be triggering your mind like whether it is an ethical dilemma or not. So, what you want what you have done is arriving there and talking to the sales manager you are able to arrange a deal which supply you with the toys at the third of the cost currently charged by your Portuguese supplier. So, you have tried to achieve something which is you are getting maybe at a third of the cost, but the talks of a equivalent quality. It is not talking of the same quality, but an equivalent quality and supply arrangements. So, we can mm, talk of like equivalent when you are you can put a like your trigger should be like it is a equivalent quality. So, next what you do in order to check the reliability of the manufacturing process, you ask the manager to show you around the place. You are surprised to find out there, there is no real workshop on the premises. So, another point is there is no real workshop on the premises. Rather, the production process is organized such that at 6 am, uh, 6 am about uh, 30 men line up at the company's gate, load large boxes with toy components on the little carts or motor scooters and take the material to their homes. Okay. So, then your prospective supplier then takes you to one of these places where you see him. Your prospective supplier then takes you to one of, uh, why this is a prospective supplier? Because you have already able to arrange your deal and after doing that you are making the visit. So, your prospective supplier then takes you to one of these places where you see a large family sitting in a garage like barn assembling the toys. Now, not only are the mother or father doing the job, but what you find the couple's six children. aged between 5 to 14, who are working busily and from what you see very cheerfully together with the parents, while the grandmother is looking after the food in an adjacent room. In the evening, so, 6 am the whole thing has started like people have assembled, they have taken the things in the carts back to the home and you see like the 6 children aged between 5 to 14 years, they are working with their parents happily, cheerfully and in the evening at around 8 pm, the day's work is done the assembled toys are stored back in the boxes and taken to the workshop of the company, where the men, the men receive their payment for the finished goods. At the end of the week, the toys are shipped to the customers in Europe. As you have never come across, 
such a pattern of manufacturing. So, you have no uh, basic previous knowledge about this. So, as you have never come across such a pattern of manufacturing, your Thai partner explains to you that this is a very common and well established practice in this part of the country and one which guarantees a good level of quality. Satisfied, you tell the Thai manager that you will conclude the paperwork. So, satisfied here also is a point. The three ethical dilemma points over here, your are ethical like triggering points over here. You have never come across certain situations, then you believe on the face value itself what your Thai manager is telling you, Thai partner is telling you and he explains like it is a very common practice and well established practice and that is what guarantees a good level of quality and that sat becomes a satisfactory explanation for you and you do not take any effort to cross verify the information that is given to you. Satisfied, you tell the Thai manager that you will conclude the paperwork once you get back home and you leave the company offices happily and you leave the company offices happy in the knowledge of the cost savings you are going to make and quietly confident that it will result in a healthy bonus for you at the end of the year. On your way back while buying some souvenirs for your 5 and 7 year old nieces, uh, for your 5 and 7 year old nieces at the airport, you suddenly start wondering if you would like to see them growing up the same way as the child workers that you have just employed to make your company's toys. So, this again puts the person, you as a manager in dilemma, production manager in dilemma, like you are buying the souvenirs for your 5 and 7 year old nieces at the airport and do you want them to grow in the same way as the, for the like the child workers that you have just employed to make the toys for your company. So, this particular uh, case uh, can uh, now be like you uh, discussed in terms of these uh, to questions that are following it, like uh, reading the case and putting yourself in the uh, reading the case, the, this can be explained now from the questions pointing to it would be like reading the case and putting yourself in the position of the, or the role of the product manager what would your gut reaction be and um, based on your choices, can you set out the reasons for your choice? So, and can you relate it to some values or principles um, that are important to you? So, what we will be doing over here? is we will try to analyze the case from the various perspectives uh, like the utilitarian perspective or the like for all the perspectives that we have studied for all the perspectives that uh, we have studied 
we will try to analyze the case from um, different perspectives and try to see the application of those theories into the decision. So, the case is about like the production manager has gone to uh, Thailand and they have uh, there he has come to settle a deal at which will make him save cost for buying toys with respect to the present Portuguese supplier who is already supplying the toys, but when he, he closes the deal and more or less comes to a final standpoint and then he tells like he wants to uh, see where it is getting produced. He comes to know like the children of 5 to 14 years of age are participating along with their parents in making the toys and the work starts from nearly 6 to 7 a.m. in the morning and continues till 8 p.m. in the evening. The, the male gets the payment for it at the end of the day and then satisfied and he gets uh, uh, information from the Thai um, partner like this is the way that generally things are done in over here and that is that gives the quality that helps in the quality of the good quality things to be produced. But he never cross checks to find out is it truly the condition what it is done. He believes in the face value information given by the Thai partner. He is satisfied like he has made some cost saving and um, then he is happy about it and then he also thinks it is going to add something to his bonus and healthy bonus. But when he goes back and he is buying souvenir for his niece, two nieces who are also of the similar sort of age. Uh, so, then maybe the dilemma starts in his mind about the decision like would you want for the um, his nieces also to grow in the same way like the child laborers maybe whom he has just employed by signing the deal. So, these uh, case we can interpret from the lens of the different theories the consequentialist, non-consequentialist, traditional theories or the modern theories of ethical decision making and we will try to see that now how we do that explanation. So, mm. when you are doing from the utilitarianism perspective, the two perspectives that we take is whether like mm. it is a action for the action we will measure the cost or benefit, the pleasure or the pain for either going for the deal or not going for the deal. So, let us see what are the pleasure and pain involved in going for the deal or not going for the deal. So, decision can be two according to utilitarian perspective like either you do the deal or you do not do the deal. If you do the deal also, there are some pleasure and pain associated with it. If you are not doing the deal also, there are some pleasure and pain associated with it. So, we will try to see it from the uh, perspectives of whether you do it or not do it. So, action 1 would be doing the deal and action 2 is not doing the deal. So, for the product manager for doing the deal, the pleasure part is for the product manager. So, it is a good deal for the business and potential for personal business. For the pain part of it, it is a bad conscience and possible risk for company reputation. For action 2, for the pleasure part it is like if you are not doing the deal, then the pleasure part of it is you are having a good conscience and you are running less risk 
of taking an unethical decision. And the pain part is of course, uh, you are running the loss of a good deal. For the Thai dealer, the pleasure part is for uh, doing the deal is of course, a good deal. And for the pain part of uh, uh, not doing the deal is loss of a good deal and you have to search for a new one, new customer in Europe. For the parents, if you do the deal, it is the secure of the family's income. Uh, but the pain part is, it is limited prospects for children. If you are not doing the deal, then search for other sources of income. For doing the deal, for children, the pleasure part is feeling of being needed, being grown up. Pain part is hard work, no chance of school education. Not doing the deal is no hard work, time to play and go to school. Pain part is potentially forced to do more other painful work. Grandmother for doing the deal is family is able to support her and for not doing the deal could be loss of economic support. So, there you find for if you are uh, seeing the pleasure and pain of doing the deal and not doing the deal. For the product manager, pleasure is of course, good deal for the business, good potential for personal business also, but you have a like loss of conscience, bad conscience that you are taking forward. When you understand like when you question like whether you want the same to be done for your nieces also. So, and for the Thai dealer, maybe it is a good deal and for the loss of good deal and looking for other consumers. So, question comes is like if you are looking into a conscience and you are not doing the deal now. So, are you, how do you ensure like the children uh, that will not be um, employed by the parents for other painful work. From this also you are doing the deal with a feeling of pleasure like the it was the securing the income of the parents, but how do you know like this because you find in the case the main is or the grandmother will be able the family is able to support the grandmother. So, in how do you know like the main shares the full income with the for the purpose of the family or the maintenance or taking care for the grandmother because you find the males are taking the work and they are receiving the money also is the what the males are doing. So, how you try to ensure about these things? because you have not cross checked it, you have not verified it. So, by just understanding, seeing it and taking, seeing like the, uh, uh, this the children are cheerful or because the um, Thai partner has told, this is the way, best way that the things are done over here. So, that is what you have believed and you have gone home satisfied. So, then if we are uh, trying to utilize from the just utilitarian perspective, maybe we are not trying to think of the 
some broader perspective over here where now we have studied all the stakeholders like why is this situation uh, in the uh, like when the Thai manager tells like um, uh, this is what is the general practice way here in this part. So why it is the general practice? What role does the Thai person has who has actually employed these people towards the development of the children? So the case is um, silent about it. So have we taken any initiatives, yes or no? If the Thai partner has not taken any initiative, does it mean, does it uh, like hint or the, does it uh, expect like the production manager this come whose toys like the people in the Europe are buying these toys and this for this particular um, firm which is giving the toys with the chocolate. Do they have any responsibility towards this Thai children also? So these aspects, uh, the, the case um, by pointing towards the issues at hand raises this question. Okay, so f to answer these questions, we have to like go into the details of the ex explaining it from different perspectives. So utilitarianism tells you the cost and benefit, the pleasure and pain of mm, either doing the deal or not doing the deal, but it is also silent about some of the aspects. The main problem of utilitarianisms are like it is the main problems of utilitarianism are like it is uh, dealing with the like um, um, subjectivity of the individual. So while um, using this theory, you have to be thinking more subjectively about, uh, you have to rather be creative and assessing such consequences as pleasures and pain. It might depend uh, heavily on the um, subjective perspective of the person that carries out the analysis. And second is, it is a problem of uh, quantification because you may have to like it will add pleasure or it may have pain, but it is quite difficult to assess the cost and benefit to every situation. So it might be quite easy in the example for the persons who are involved directly with the transaction but it is certainly difficult to do so for the children involved since their pleasure and pain is not quantifiable. Especially in these cases, it might be quite difficult to weigh pleasure and pain mm, is mm, when it is coming to losing a good contract uh, and mm, whether it is really comparable to forcing children to mm, live up or under utilitarianism health and safety issues of the firms require value of life and death to be quantified and calculated. So without the possibility of acknowledging that they might have an intrinsic worth beyond calculation. So these type of uh, problems of quantification may be there when you are distributing, uh, when you are dealing with utilitarianism theory. Also there could be a problem of distribution of utility, means finally it may appear by assessing the greatest good for the greatest number, the interest of minorities are overlooked. In our example, a minority of children might suffer so that the majority may benefit from the greater utility. So this majority could be the family 
this majority could be the thigh manufacturer this majority, majority uh, this majority could be the person the production manager from europe so who is actually suffering is the minority of the children for the sake of the majority so utilitarianism has the some limitations specifically the limitation of the subjectivity and quantification so this have been modified as we understand in the later cases by act utilitarianism and um, rule utilitarianism so act utilitarianism is looks to a single action and base the moral judgment on the amount of pleasure and pain in that single action causes rule utilitarianism looks towards the all classes of actions and ask whether the underlying principles of actions can produce more pleasure than pain for the society in the long run so our utilitarianism uh, utilit Utilitarianism analysis, our utilitarian analysis that we used in the principle or that of act utilitarianism by asking whether like just in that single situation the collective pleasure exceeded um, pain inflicted. So, given the specific circumstances in the case that might result in the conclusion that it is morally right, because the children pain is considerably small, given the fact that for the instance they may have to work anyway um, or that school education might not be available to them. From the perspective of rule utilitarianism, however, one would have to ask whether child labor in principle produces more pleasure than pain. Here the judgment might look into the considerable difference since it is not difficult to argue about the pains of child labor which easily outweigh the pleasure of gained from the economic benefits of it. So, rule utilitarianism then relieves us from examining right and wrong in every single situation and offers the possibility that the certain principles that we can apply to all situations. So, when you are doing an act utilitarianism perspective, for the situation specific thing the act may appear to be correct, but in the same situation when you try to see like when you see can it be applied to all at the end of the case when you are doing it like do you want your knees to grow also in the same way, do you want any other children of the same age to grow in the same way and to be employed for labor and if you are answering yes or no for it then this is what you are applying rule utilitarianism. So, the same case can once we have looked through the lens of utilitarianism and we have judged the pleasure and pain part of whether uh, trying to answer like whether it is right and wrong to employ small children for this type of toy making. So, we get like maybe due to from act utilitarianism we find it to be correct, but from rule utilitarianism we find like maybe it is questionable. By applying Kant's test of morality to this situation, so we get the following insights. So, in according to Kant's principles, the uh, according to maxim 1. So, the first question we would ask like would we want everybody um, to act according to the principles of our action. 
So, as a production manager, you are already uncomfortable about applying the same principle of exploiting children to from uh, from the third world country to the children back in Europe. So, you probably would not like this to become a universal law, which would then suggest this activity could be deemed immoral on the basis of inconsistency. Regarding maxim 2, like it is questionable whether the children have freely and autonomously uh, decided to work. By making use of their labor, you could be said to be largely treating them as means to ends rather than ends in themselves, suggesting that their basic human dignity have not been respected over here and fully recognized and respected. According to the maxim 3, so there is also a question of whether you would like your friends and family to know about your decision. So, it would be doubtful that every rational human being would universally come to the same conclusion that child labor is a principle that should be followed in a general basis. So, that brings us to again the point of dilemma to understand what you have done, whether it is morally right or questionable. Next, when we see this from the perspective of uh, the theory of rights, what we see that it provides the most straightforward answer to this ethical dilemma. In using the child labor, the product manager could be said to violate the rights of the children to education and arguably infringe on the right to freedom of consent, because it is doubtful really whether they have any consent was asked from them or they have given their consent for this labor. Also, the human right perspective would cast doubt on the issue that individuals right to a living wage have been respected over here or not, because if it was done, then it would not have necessitated the whole family to participate in this activity. Maybe it is the poor wage that you get and so the longer hours you work maybe means more money or the num more number of people that works means more mm, uh, money that you get which will help the family to survive. So, if the standard of wage is something which is of uh, a person which we call like minimum level required or for a which we call a living wage. So, possibly this would not have been the scenario, because it is a poor wage, the people are trying to engage as many a number of people in the family as possible, so that collectively it leads to some wage which will help them to survive. So, here again what we see if you look in this example, uh, the first test was, would be to ask like if all possess the same li basic liberty. So, because the case is based in Thailand and it is making a comparison with Europe. So, uh, apart from the cultural differences between the Europe and Thailand, this is certainly not the case where all are enjoying the same basic liberty, because here what we find may be children are not even allowed for a basic education. So, the second 
principle could be like it will allow for a more tolerant approach to child labor, which talks of like the first criterion for inequality would be to ask if the children are worse or better off with the arrangement. One might reasonably argue here that children are often forced to worse things in developing countries than assembling plastic toys, which could be prostitution, begging and theft would be the other alternatives. So, if you are comparing these to those type of professions, you may tell like they are better off if you concluded the deal. But if it meant that you signing the deal would mean like children will be missing school, then they would be, then that, that would otherwise would have attended, then the arrangement is not benefiting the least well off. So, the second um, criteria though poses even more of a problem, since without access to education, so the children do not have a position, do not gain a position in life to help them to live in a um, better way to compare themselves with the better parties like the such as you yourself are having. So, because they do not have the basic uh, capability to like, come up to the same standard. So, this if dif discussed in this way, we understand the fairness or equality of opportunity is not there when you are comparing children from the two different parts of the world. So, here if you are uh, utilizing uh, this more so extending this to the justice perspective and if you see like when you are discussing about this um, equality and inequality. So, it may so, we, we may so see like the Rawls view of justice can be used to justify multinationals exploitations of um, low wages and poor conditions in less developing countries, as under certain conditions like some immensities have taken it upon themselves to cater for school education or basic health care in less developed manufacturing locations. So, by this the MNC still take advantage of the lower wages in these countries, but by providing a system of basic liberties compatible with the similar system of liberty for all and creating conditions of fair equality of opportunity at least at the local level, one might argue that the resulting inequality are still to the greatest benefit of the least advantage. In the sense like if these MNCs are not coming, then the probably the local people would have to face more poverty and less opportunity for development than they would have had it. So, in the rights theory, we are telling like what are the basic rights, what are the liberties and do is, is it like the, they have the right to equal opportunity, whether it is equally existing in both the countries or not. So, if it is not there, then according to the Rawls view, so the immensities can um, like to, to justify their coming to a uh, less developed country. So, they are taking advantage of the low wages, but if they are taking measures to bring people to enjoy similar liberty like basic right to education and healthy living conditions and also taking measures to see like the fairness of opportunity, equality of opportunity is created locally then maybe it can be discussed in the way 
like not having any MNC coming and doing the business is at least a better of situation. Um, it's, not, it's, it's not a better of situation as compared to uh, MNC coming and doing a business because it's a, um, maybe from a situation of not having anything to develop to a situation where an MNC comes in at least having something to under to which will think of their development and to get rid of the poverty. Otherwise, left to themselves, maybe they will be facing more poverty. So, these could be the um, justifications from the uh, traditional perspectives, like when we are dealing with the utilitarianism theory or the uh, rights theory, uh, duties theory and the corresponding duties of the firm and the justice theory. But when at the end we ask like, like what is, was it right for the production manager to do it in this way or we face dilemma questions like me as a person what I would have done differently if I would have been in that place. So, that really brings to the forefront of the discussion the analysis of the whole situation from the virtue ethic perspective mm, or the feminist theory perspective, uh, the discourse theory perspective or the postmodern perspective. So, from the virtue ethics uh, perspective, so from this point of view, the virtuous product manager could take in a different perspectives, um, different like depending on the community from which maybe the virtuous manager belongs to his own set of values, his own set of beliefs, uh, spiritual beliefs and the guidance that he has received in his, he or she has received in his life. So, on one side, uh, the person could be compassionate and considerate to the situation of the suppliers and uh, then um, taking into account the children's need for education and their need for work and money as well. So, you perhaps would try to do business with them while at the same time you might try to as, um, assume your responsibility for the children's education. So, how you can do that? For instance, you may support a local school or pay sufficiently high wages to allow the family to send the children to school rather than making use of them as cheap labor. Otherwise, you may also think like the good life in rural Thailand might in fact consist of an entire family working happily together uh, because that is the impression maybe that you have got from uh, seeing the children are very cheerful while they are working with the parents or even the Thai uh, manager, your partner told you this is generally what is done here and that gives a good quality of the product. So, that could be your idea also. So, and the western concepts of education, professionalization and efficiency are different concept of good life that might not be appropriate for the Thai approach to life. So, you may think like the Thais think of a good life in a different way as a concept from that of the how the westerners understand it. So, this is where you are bringing in a relativistic orientation uh, like which is like it is not absolute in nature, but you are trying to relate it to the particular situation about what you are uh, thinking of the decision to be taken. So, you are making a comparison between e Europe and its or the western and its value systems and the Thai culture and its value systems. Typically though, the virtue ethics in a business context 
such as this would suggest that the solution to many of the problems faced by managers are located in the culture and the tradition of the relevant community that you are dealing with. So, so the this guidance you may take from your professional codes of conduct from var various role models that or from a professional training what is expected of a production manager in the code of conduct as for a virtuous production manager these may be your guidelines for deciding over here. So, how to act in a particular way based be your on your personal convictions, the values that are taught to you or you may think like am I superimposing my values on others, the considerations that you make of the local culture and values also. And if you find like maybe you, you they may be happy in working with this. So, can you influence them, can you try to change uh, their orientations to find make them see the importance of education. So, what, what you can do in that regard. Applying feminist theory uh, perspective to this, um, we find like the case itself does not give us um, like um, <coughs> that much of knowledge that we can um, get from what the um, case information the case uh, provides us with. Application of the feminist theory perspective would require that <coughs> the uh, production manager you know, would try to get a closer view of the family involved, uh, more closer view of the family involved and see if the children are really happy in this situation. So, getting involved with the family, it would also involve a better understanding of the social and economic constraints that cause the family to embark on this particular production process pattern. So, the irony of this is that the feminist theory would not necessarily argue categorically against any involvement of children in the process as long as the interfamiliar relationships are functioning well and the children interfamiliar relationships are functioning well and the children are not forced, exploited or compelled to work beyond their physical capacities. As the latter condition probably might not be fulfilled, feminist perspective would probably end in objecting towards the child labor as well, but not because it is violating certain of the western principles, but because of the likely distress and suffering of the children. So, furthermore the feminist theories if applied over here would look into the situation based on the other actors who are involved and scrutinize it. For example, the question of whether the money earned by the assembling of the toys is spent on and is the if the income is distributed in the family or not. Because here in the case we find it is the male who is taking the payment and receiving the payment. It is nothing is mentioned in the case like whether it has been distributed equally and uh, the, uh, the hit that we get from the ut uh, utilitarianism theory also the distribution of the utility is it done to all the members or it gets restricted to some of the members. From the discourse theory perspective what we find. So, if we apply discourse theories in it, it 
what, what we find is uh, it is uh, we are not able to see over here like mm, whether a discussion between both the parties are going to lead to make any changes in the scenario or not. So, it would however suggest that all parties involved starting from the uh, Thai trading company, the confectionery manage manufacturer, parents, children. So, but also the potential consumers of Europe should uh, meet together into like some norm generation discourse on the topic. So, apart from this fact, it shows uh, some practical difficulties to, um, to this problem, because it is it takes a uh, very long drawn effect to collect all people together, make them meet at a common place, then decide on the issues, then whether the person's views get represented properly or not, are the children able to speak for themselves or they speak what others are, um, tell them to do. So, these could be the problems from the discourse ethics uh, perspective, but of course, this can be taken as a guideline for starting the um, discussions. So, from the postmodern perspective, so it is difficult to st state anything about the case. So, without being like knowing the situations in Thailand very well. So, and mm, if we have not immersed, uh, if the decision maker has not immersed in yourself, himself or herself in the mm, scenario which is there. So, mm, otherwise it will be a moral impulse about the situation and then you try to decide based on that moral impulse. Uh, that we think is the moral way to decide in that particular situation. So, however, this example um, um, gives us certain hints and um, as postmodernists we may tell like um, that the manager, the production manager. Um, would have my made maybe the first right move in actually going to the site of the production and facing those who have be who will be affected instead of signing the deal at the first hand. So, maybe it, it could have happened like the people the person the Thai person has in just informed them see the production manager is coming to visit your place. So, if you are not looking happy, if you are not doing your work together, could be like he is not going to do the deal with us sort of. So, we do not know like whether it was a fabricated situation where the children were looking happy while they were working or because the production manager never interacted with them to understand what is exactly going on. So, like instead of, so instead of just staying separate from them, uh, treating them as uh, suppliers, we could uh, production manager, the postmodern view suggests like the uh, production managers go, go there and try to inquire, try to see what is happening in, uh, in reality over there. So, we could also try to think of like our own attempt to make a very uh, like um, autonomous decision, which is based on the situations and um, Thailand rather than on based on the situation, which is um, based on uh, situations in Thailand rather than relying on a corporate code of ethics, particularly which requires a um, 
have an universal application could be like um, Thailand has some special issues some um, uh, ways of uh, behavior which are embedded in the culture and we need to study that and take a special decision for the case of the Thailand the scenario of happening in the Thailand case. So, um, also the postmodernist viewpoint questions the fact like the um, how much like you are uh, so corporate mentality oriented like you immediately start thinking of the cost and uh, bonuses rather than you think of the people and their lives. So, whether this was a right move or not based on this you as a person and your thought process like how greatly embedded you are in the mentality of the organization like you immediately started thinking about that and not about the maybe the uh, small children the life uh, there and the people that you have employed. So, maybe on the basis of the postmodern lens, we are not able to finally decide about the situation for the manager, because the contextual nuances of the situation are um, not, um, information is not there and we are not able to understand the extent of like true moral impulse which is possible in that particular um, context. So, when we see like the decision uh, from the perspective uh, to buy or to employ uh, children uh, when they are working maybe from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. with the family and they are compromising on their education and uh, so and uh, they are working with their parents to earn for the family. So, if we are applying an absolute lens or a relative lens or like whether we will try to take uh, ap apply one of the perspectives like either utilitarianism or rights or justice or virtue or feminist lens or we take a discourse lens or we take a postmodern lens. What we find like if we are taking these lenses separately the focus of the lenses are different maybe from one to the other and it is whether this has been a right or wrong decision to enter into a contract like this uh, which is different answers through the different routes that you have taken. So, when we go for the act utilitarianism uh, and we uh, take the route of answering for the pleasure and pain of doing the of going for the act or not going for the act maybe the pleasure uh, the benefit that you get for um, doing the deal and the pain that you get for not doing the deal uh, which are unanswered in this case and the doubts like whether the if you are not doing it whether the children you can guarantee like they are they will be getting the education, they will not be um, put into other more uh, painful jobs or not, may guide you towards deciding for yes, the this is the correct path of um, taking of deciding yes and that is um, the answer. But when you go for the rule utilitarianism and you tell like do you want it to be universally applied, do you want all children to be growing up in this way universally and that is that the child labor is a good principle or not, maybe then you do not with uh, that conviction that you take say in active utilitarianism 
that yes, we have taken a correct decision. So that comes, uh, or you face some sort of dilemma in uh, telling like, yes, I have done the right thing and I expect that this is the principle to be followed universally. When it comes to the mm, right perspective, again, when you tell like whether people are enjoying their rights or not, do they have the similar liberty across, then and then maybe what is the focus you are getting over here, the uh, differences in opportunities available and the exposure to liberty that the basic liberties that they have, which mm, and what you want others to think of you if they think like they have decided like you have decided like this brings you again to the uh, dilemma of understanding like whether you have taken the right decision by employing this or it triggers uh, these children or it triggers you to thinking of like what you ca could have done uh, differently or what you could have done in a better way. So when you're talking of justice theory, so there you may see like it takes care of this inequality, taking, understanding the factors like this, the basic liberty enjoyed by the children at two different parts of the continent maybe is uh, not same. And that's why is the relative perspective, like when you're deciding about children from a particular country. But because there are certain basic liberties which you think like it is should be universal in nature. So the, if you take steps for educating them and um, provide them with some better wage, so, so that the children are sent for education. So mm, this maybe gives you a solution. Then again, like when you're dealing with the virtue theory, it is guiding you towards thinking, like, am I imposing my thoughts on the Kai Thai ways of thinking? Am I trying to impose what I understand by a good life into the how others understand good life? So what is the correct way of behaving in this? Which makes, which uh, hints you like to become more involved in the issue before you just take a decision. And then all discourse ethics and postmodern mm -hmm. ethics also guides you towards becoming more involved in the uh, situation. So uh, if we are using the ethical prism concept where we are using trying to use more or less all the theories together after we have learned about the maybe how where it helps to reach us and what are the limitations of a particular theory if you're trying to take the ethical prism perspective where you're using all the theories together then it gives a uh, as a better scope of exploring mm, the ways that we approach a particular problem. So maybe from when you are taking the ethical prism perspective over here, what we would, would have done differently is, is mm, like first when you meet the potential, first when you Maybe when you start questioning from point one itself of the case, like first you may tell like whether it is good for, um, because you are a product manager. So is it these questions, because now when you've dealt with the vulnerable customers and all, the ethical issues may start from point one itself. Is it good to include small plastic toys with these chocolate sweets? Because then what is the quality of the sweet and what is the like what is the quality of the plastic toy are the children of even of europe are buying this um, chocolate because it is of good quality or in the attraction of the toy so is it not like it's a 
you can question this marketing practice itself. So mm, then beyond that also, uh, what is see the case is silent about the price that you have determined for this mm, uh, the ch mm, chocolate and with the plastic toy and how you are accounting for the um, wages that you are paying to your supplier. So you can as a extend your moral imagination also to these fronts to give a like holistic view to the case, thinking of the different uh, stakeholders involved in this case. So mm, it's not only the MNC, maybe the other stakeholders that are involved and of course the government and the of the specific place where you are going and doing your business is also an important stakeholder. So when you have made a potential Thai manufacturer of these toys at a trade fair in Europe, so you now visit the company in the northeastern part of Thailand to finalize a two-year supply contract. So here like you come to finalize not to see the situations like uh, what, uh, so you come with a preset orientation of your mind like I will be finalizing the deal because you are moved by the thing like I am making a cost saving. So instead of that if it is like you will first go and verify about the conditions um, how under what this manufacturing is done and whether you feel like that there comes the question of application of ethics of care, your responsibility to the stakeholder of the stakeholders also. If you come, want to come in and your corporate citizenship role of thinking about the stakeholder of the stakeholders also, seeing like in what condition like they are functioning, whether you can through your ways of maybe the power structure that you have, can you influence the Thai mm, manufacturer of these toys to give some uh, conditions, better living conditions, working conditions, mm, wage or schooling facilities, whatever in some way which can you influence uh, them or you extend your help to him or you go and you take some voluntary measures to solve these cases. So you are going with a preset mind, I will be settling the deal because it is you are moved by the fact like you are getting it at the third of the cost and with an equivalent quality is also something, the quality of the toy which is um, getting with selling with the chocolate and also the, this is also an ethical question like if it is an equivalent quality. So for the sake of the getting at a lesser price, uh, lesser price, are you compromising on the quality of the toy also because these are plastic toys, these could be health issues for the children also who are using it. You don't know they are using it, th these are small plastic toys they can be putting it inside their mouth also, so they could be chewing it also. So what use they are actually putting it to and how the plastic may affect the, the quality of plastic may affect the mm, health of the children. So the folk as a product manager maybe your focus is only on the um, cost part, but here wh whether you have taken a um, due care approach to see whether due care has been uh, followed throughout, whether you have done a due diligence of that. So these are questions which the uh, uh, is not answered and this needs to be focused into. So whether you have uh, done a due diligence of the process to find out like whether due care has been taken in the how the process is maintain what is the quality of the plastics, then how their people are functioning, do they get a proper wage or not, are they functioning under exploitations or not. So these type of things. So then when you come to this thing like this 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. working hours and then they are going to their homes and assembling. 
even after meeting the children, seeing them, you uh, working with them. So, um, and the uh, process followed over there. You should the it it is expected like you try to observe them more because you do not have any first hand information before you came over here. So, uh, it requires you to get into uh, some sort of information gathering, not only from what the Thai, thai partner explains you, but also from the people who are actually working in that scenario and to cross check whether other firms also are following the same process. Try to find out why this is the process followed here in this part of Thailand. Are there not any protests maybe from now when you have understood about the role of the civil societies, civil societies organizations who mm, try to see like the children are actually uh, getting benefits for uh, or getting to speak about their rights or they are not forced to work. Then what is the role of the Thai government in it? Are there not any regulations? Why the rules are, are there any rules? If yes, whether it is implemented or not implemented, what are the mm, bottlenecks in implementation? So can that be addressed in certain ways or not? So the, the questions from this type of uh, mindset, like when you're asking these questions, so it speaks more about the your role as the product manager and maybe the corporate citizenship behavior of the firm in Europe that you're representing, the MNC that has come to do a business in the developing country. So, and this cross-checking, like this good level of quality, these are very like qualitative terms mentioned. So, how you cross-check on these things and try to relate to these factors like this gives this to the claim of the Thai partner, like this working condition. Uh, gives rise to a good quality. So, what is the justification for it that needs to be verified. So, and then when you are thinking at the case, like when you are thinking like whether you want your children, your niece who are like maybe your own children uh, to do behave, be in the same type of situation and you find like you have employed maybe similar age children uh, to the work situation. So, maybe it is a decision that you have taken, but also before doing that, have you thought of the other processes that maybe as a product manager, um, you can just try to implement to try to find out or maybe ask your organization to take care of um, before you just say yes and sign the final contract. So, are there any avenues for improving the situations that the people are in? See, awareness have to be generated in many cases. If they think like what is the you can compare it also what like these children if they do not have any uh, basic education uh, and they are in, into this job, maybe they become skilled laborers when they grow up for the same type of profession and um, but do they develop their choices for employability, selection of other professions. So, these things, uh, do they become uh, rational thinkers for deciding what is right to think and how to express about their own thoughts or not. So, these are question comes when these are whose responsibilities. If as an MNC, as a representative of the MNC, you find like maybe the Thai government is not able to do 
that much of the responsibility as given in the case then are there any like civil society organizations who are taking care of it or beyond this what part of responsibility you can take up as a corporate citizen to uh, maintain or to just bring into balance the uh, this thing the uh, their improving them their employability living standards and making them better citizens for tomorrow also when you're talking of the qualities of the there are many issues to this case only be, it's not only the focus for the children like if you're dealing this from the sustainability perspective maybe you are talking with respect to the um, this man the economic sustainability but what about the um, social sustainability so do when you're talking of education maybe when you become educated you have develop your choice rational choices then maybe you can expand on your choices rather than being confined to one and so that to some extent tells you about what you actually um, leave to your uh, future generations also and in terms of definitely for the working conditions and time or timings these things also needs to be looked into and when you're talking of the environmental sustainability so actually when you're talking of equivalent quality so how this plastic is Manu manufactured what is the maybe the either the pollution done to the um, ecosystem the air or water because um, the because there is no real workshop on the premises so um, so the how the case is also not uh, focused much into the how the toy components are are, are actually mm, manufactured the case starts from the toy components being assembled part so what about the earlier to it how it has been produced and all so this part has not been highlighted but when as a role of a product manager so and if you have to check into the due care followed through the whole process means you have to start from the um, like procurement of the raw material to its whole processing also but that has not been uh, focused much in the uh, discussion of the case but you when now we have understood the different stakeholders attached to a particular uh, situations if you um, take it in that way you may come up with more issues that have been maybe these are dormant issue in the this case the prominent issue that comes to focus is that of maybe the children working and because the case ends with this children being compared with the children in Europe Thai children getting compared with the children in the Europe who are maybe whether they're better off or not and the difference in the conditions that you voluntarily may be imposed on one and whether this has been a right way of uh, taking a decision or not but there are other very important issues throughout the whole case silent issues um, like that of as we told like whether it is good to uh, give a toy with the chocolate and who ensures about the quality of that toy who ensures like the because the plastic um, being whether what quality it is how the children use it or not so what is the quality of the chocolate per se uh, do they buy it for the sake of the toy or for the chocolate so and then how these toys get produced where from this plastic gets sourced how it is done so and because the case is focused mainly on the assembling part of it but there are queries throughout what is the role of the government what is the role of the CSOs 
what role the supplier himself have, um, the, the Thai manufacturer himself have uh, towards the, his um, employees? Can he leave everything towards the fact like this is the custom over here? What proactive steps maybe ha he have taken to do something uh, differently when he is thinking when it is like the children are not getting the exposure to some even basic education. So these type of uh, questions are not answered over here, but when you are seeing the case as a whole, you can always uh, try to put these questions and try to answer for it to find out not only whether the decision taken in this condition is right or wrong, but these type of questions will help you to um, answer, to get you the guidelines regarding uh, what else could we have done or what else could be done in this uh, situation, taking into the fact that maybe if this product manager would not have entered into the uh, darkness contract um, contract, maybe some other product manager would come and sign this deal. If not, it is, it is against the, uh, the, if not the MNC as such is not thinking of entering into the contract. So you have to look into the uh, culture of the organization MNC also, like what it tries to focus into, feature into. So taking all these things into, you have to focus into the value of the organization itself, value system of the organization itself. Here you are talking of the virtue of the product manager, virtuous product manager. You can di discuss about the organizational culture, its values also, what it tries to promote. And um, taking all facts together, what is the role the business can play in gym, doing something differently in this scenario, some guiding steps may come out if you are asking the question from the different stakeholders connected to the business perspective and using a ethical prism perspective. Thank you.